You are now tuned in to the WRBZR and the CNC podcast. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy. Welcome, welcome, welcome back again. You know what it is. The CNC podcast. Your host, Derek Olson, a.k.a. Why Not Derek, and we finna get to it. This episode is sponsored by Why Would You Not, which is a creative collective, and they do a lot of different things. They're a digital, a digital um, creator. They uh, create, you know, designer one-on-one pieces. They have a brand, Sinclair Pierre. I'm going to put it somewhere in the screen in here. But, yeah, uh, go over there. You know, products will be dropping soon. You know, one-on-one pieces and, uh, you know, some just, you know, some travel merch, you know, shit that just reminds yourself about you. Remind yourself to take care of you, you know, that type of shit. Just giving back to yourself, giving more energy to you, you know what I mean? But, uh, this one, uh, I want to, um, I want to play some. I want to play some. Yeah, yeah. One time for the city. Uh, yeah, yeah. I see you, girl, open toes and you're hella fly. I seen you with that weak dude and I wonder why. I'm just trying to show you things, girl, and set the vibe. I ain't with that player shit, pimp and die. Just trying to know if you a hoe or ride or die. You could tell me what you want, but I can sense a lot. You used to dudes running game, well, I'm in the game running things. And certain people never change. Shit. You know how that goes, she preaching she a good woman doing hoish things. She at the club a night, she don't deserve a ring. Chanel this, Gucci that, all expensive things. Don't fight the feeling, if it feels so right. Don't fight the feeling, if it feels so right. Don't fight the feeling. Don't mind the singing. It, so right. it was really a rough draft, but uh, don't fight the feeling. If it feels so right. Vicky this, Louis that, all designer frames. She got the body of a goddess, make a nigga go insane. I'm trying to test dry your body. These other women be Hondas and you a Maserati. To the game, a new Marcus Garvey. You wanted a way out, I wanted a way in. If we keep sleeping together, how could we stay friends? The vibe I give off is so unexplainable. You gotta go do some shit to feel relatable. Some too far gone, they ain't savable. They don't think like me, it's not capable. My soul is what I'm giving you. An intelligent misfit is truly who I'm speaking to. I'm saying these things so you can feel it too. This is the beginning, but it's feeling like the outro. Time heals better than medicine. How you give up the ass and try to squeeze your heart in. Don't fight the feeling. If it feels so right. Don't fight the feeling. nice sometimes to set the vibe off of some shit you created and this is episode seven the ships now honestly it took me a little while to put this together the way i wanted to put it together but they kept taking the video down so i just decided to record the whole thing over again because maybe i was saying you know uh triggered words or something like that i don't know i literally i'm gonna get into it but before anything, you know, before I get into it, the real concept of this is just the, you know, the opinion of what I think this whole thing is about, you know, and I mean, relationships, friendships, partnerships, whatever kind of ships it is, that's why I named it The Ships. And this is episode seven, by the way. But here is something very important, right? There's three things you should know. One, before you ever try to build any kind of partnership or just you're in a relationship, you got to work on a friendship. I know it's really cliche, 
but the basis and foundation that you need to build with somebody is very important. And I know I, this this type of microwave era we are in, where things happen so fast and no one's really able to control it. It makes it for more learning. It, it gives the ability to learn more, which means um, maybe not go out there and make all these kind of mistakes or just maybe make the right kind of mistakes. And by that, I mean the mistakes that are risks that will put you in a, a, a place or in a space where you could really learn about things, where you don't just keep going into every situation with the same intent and then thinking the same criteria with the same, you know, individual physical attributes or whatever kind of attributes or just looking at the same formula. The formula don't change. The results don't change. You know what I mean? Plus, when you really think about it, a relationship between friends before a relationship is just two people you know it's a state of being connected and well a friendship is 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 a relationship between friends and a relationship is the state of people being connected and a partnership is an arrangement where parties mutually come together so just think about all these things it's it's literally i just told you how the steps usually go it usually becomes friend you you know we become friends or you or whoever they become friends You know, you work and build. Then you get into a relationship, a connection. Then, you know, you hope to take it to that level in life where you guys can own property, you know, business, uh, whatever, whatever that you want to, you know, succeed in life. That right there is the part that a lot of us want to really achieve. We're already in relationships or going through or have been through, but how many times have we actually been in partnerships where we actually... You know what I mean? That that we come together rather than us being together and we're just together. We come together from us already being together. Like that's the further in the process and that's the, the part that, you know, a lot of us don't get to make it to because there's so many difficult obstacles in, in between and, you know, having a partnership is important, you know, in a relationship, especially because in a relationship, a lot of things happen. It's a lot of things to remember, a lot of times that were good, a lot of times that were bad, a lot of things that were done, a lot of things that weren't. And in the relationship, it kind of clouds it. It kind of clouds the, 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 the good and the bad. And it's always having you picking, you know, a high or a low or a, a slow and a fast or, you know, what? I, it's just one of those things. And, like, partnerships are just kind of clear cut. That's why that's what you want to get to. You want to get to the point where we're like, hey, we're already here. Let's get to something bigger than this, where we both just look at this as, as a business, as a partnership, and the title alone gives it its own emotion. It gives it its own action. It gives its own process. It gives its own entitlement. It just, all of those things happen when you, you know, you, you evolve from the friendship to the relationship to the partnership. And it's, it's, it's really one of those things where the, the, um, The generation, the microwave generation, they don't really understand that, you know. So it's just a lot of out there getting it in and then just off with it the next and then just coming back together to try to, you know, represent and build a good legacy when it's like the time was never put in properly for you to even know if this was a good move or not, you know. It was just a, one of those type of things. And, well, you know, it's 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 one of those things where you don't really solidify you don't solidify the feelings and you don't really solidify and establish those type of things and it's like this right in a partnership you you you're you're proving all those feelings every day in a relationship you're establishing and solidifying those feelings so Again, they just coincide with each other because as you're in the relationship, you're looking for partnership. You're looking to do something longer. A relationship could be a week, you know, two weeks, three weeks. Partnership could be the same, but with the relationship, the partnership will last longer because there's more foundation built. It's harder these days to meet somebody and then instantly feel like you're right there at at where 10 years would have gave you or five years would have gave you. Even though sometimes it does feel like that. 
it may feel like 10 minutes is a, is a year or a month but in real in real reality that's you putting yourself ahead of so much time that hasn't happened which makes it unrealistic which is honestly it's not a bad or a good thing it's just a thing that happens it can't turn into a bad thing because you know when you start harping and you know dragging yourself through emotions you don't need to be doing or bringing yourself to that's when you get you know come across people who just would love you to death but just will be fine with ignoring you which is hard for some people to accept but but it's just crazy because when you really think about that that's it's crazy because like the feelings between each other already established and solidified and the partnerships are about taking those feelings and proving them every day because if you think about it relationships are for finding the feelings and partnerships are about proving how real they are I'm not saying that relationship isn't about proving how real it is but when you get to a part where it's a partnership where you're past the like alright we're just not boyfriend and girlfriend let's like you know what that process that bridge right there that gap that 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 bridges that all together from the relationships to the partnership is where we all want to be. We all get in relationships. Even if it's for two, three days, we, we have relations and, and the things we do give us that relationship feel without the relationship. But then it's just a bunch of dynamic of individuals wanting to be either, you know, in that or not in that or be titled, not titled or be single or be tied down or just be in a relationship and some people are just the music the image you know in social media that kind of shit will betray a way for people to look at to steer to maybe get attention and in this age going viral is you know important for people which is understandable because I get it people want attention and they may be able to help other people you know if you can get a million followers tomorrow and then you can promote and then make yourself become a business or entity off of that and capitalize you know more to you because that's a hustle in itself but not everyone's thinking about that not everyone's thinking about how to not only micromanage those type of things but find those passive incomes and passive things to do within the partnership you know because then it's like like I said like when you, when you think of like relationships and then friendships you get back to the friendships and you're like you realize how many, you know, friends you lose, you know, doing during this too. Because during this, not everyone thinks you're making the best decision. Some people are on board with you. Some people align and say they're on board. They just want to do whatever makes you happy. And sometimes they don't like them, you know. They, they just wouldn't get along with them. It's a time thing, you know, where you get the attention. And just like sometimes funny, it's funny how time and money, you know, can make relationships stronger. And sometimes just love when I take the credit but when I say that I say it in the context of sometimes it's not because we people love one each other one it one it that love each other one another I know I'm saying one each other <laughs> but that right there is a big is a big thing because a lot of times people get back together because the things that they do for them the things that they buy the way they treat them or how they go above and beyond for them. And is it love or is it because that person has it? Sometimes having the money isn't always going to be able to let you really have feelings. Because I'm not going to say people with money don't have feelings. But it's just the the order of importance is not. That's not on the top priority. Some people can just live through things without ever feeling what they truly need to feel. Look at lawyers. Lawyers are... To, for people who are regular, I mean, besides the the financial part and the notoriety, it's pretty big, it's pretty decent being a human, not having to lie and organize and put yourself in these situations where you can't really enjoy the the labors of just being a normal person without having all these stigmas and titles on you because you're a lawyer. So imagine the average person and the stigmas and titles they have on them because of what they're capable of. You know what I mean? And I, for the longest time, I was like, you know, I don't want to get on there and be like, damn, I'm a narcissist. I don't want to talk about things and then contradict myself, but it's opinion-based. If I do that, it's because I understand what I understand. You know what I mean? And what I'm speaking on is what I understand. So if it's something you can't understand, then 
maybe I can help you figure it out, but maybe what I'm saying is something for you not to understand at this moment. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I write down notes now, and I, I sometimes I write down things like this. Like, I, I did a post in a poll, and I was like, why do you think that relationships don't work? And it was a lot of women. Right off the back, it was like, damn, a lot of women just were posting that. Men aren't, you know, ready to commit, or they were saying they ain't shit, or they were saying that they're for everybody, or they just lie a lot. And it's just like, it's the same shit. It's just like these little, these little dots that are just equaling up to a whole circle, you know? It's like, man, there's like, do, 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 do. Is it guys that are just unrealistic? Or is it guys that just can't meet the, meet the, uh, meet the level that they're needed to be meeting at, the women at, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not about really the matching the energy part. It's like, if they're already on a level, you need to meet them at that level or higher so that you know, you come off the back with knowing that we're not going to be wasting time. We're trying to see, you know, what this can go to, you know, as friends first, obviously, if that's how fast it moves and it becomes a relationship faster, whatever that's, the, that's, that's between them, whoever. But the thing is, a lot of times it's because people have unrealistic expectations and outlooks. It's like you see you see Shorty over here getting a Birkin because whatever she was doing and y'all instantly think that every guy you get was going to be able to afford your Birkin for you. It's like, listen, be realistic first. If you can't buy it for yourself and you can't work to get it for yourself, you probably don't need it. You got to stop being unrealistic. I'm not saying you can't get it. I'm just saying you don't need it. Big difference. That's the thing about when people have opinions. They can say things like that because um, at the moment you don't need it. It's not going to make you, it's not going to make you live tomorrow. You're going to wake up and it's going to be a bag that costs a lot of money that you have that you're going to show off. And that's going to eventually get tucked away when you get the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And then you'll be on to the next thing. It's just like the way that con consuming things that we see and like because other people make it or wear it or, or give it light or give it exposure. It's just crazy because there's so many people that like are creative, that are small business, that we don't even get to really get in tune with because people aren't reposting it. And I'm not saying that they have to. I'm not saying all that. But I'm just saying people pick and choose so much what they want to do because they have to, the right as an individual that they they pick the wrong things. And then they double back on something as if they've been rocking with it or they've been a fan of it or they've been in tune with it when it's like, damn. I love doing business with, you know, other small businesses because then I get to relish in the moments of like, I'm a creator. I remember when I made the first sale. I remember when I made commissions and submissions and art shows and pop-up shops and you know going to craft fairs and just doing a book and doing this I remember that and through, through it all I'm like damn I'm like I don't really know if I ever would have the time for myself so I don't know if I would have the time for somebody else which is crazy because it's like damn I wish it could be like that I wish I could I wish I could sit and find time to have that same passion and pouring into all that that I just explained about you to somebody and then I started realizing that for me to write the books, I had to go through it, which means I had to put myself out there to be in a situation to be able to feel and understand, not be like scared of what's going on, and not even scared is not even a good word. It was just being non committed to what was going on because I wasn't sure. Because it's like when you get in a situation, the first thing you want to do is obviously, you know, feel out the surface and see what's going down. But it was like, man, I wasn't even really willing to build a friendship because a lot of the times. I was like, what are we doing here? Are we going to waste time? Are we going to do this? Because, like, how long can texting last? And how many dates you want to go on? Then it's not even about the, f it's not even about the get, get busy part. It's just about the parts of, of, of it where it's like this. Are you going to commit to the situation? But then it's like, I don't want to be locked down. I don't want to be tied down. But it's like, you, if you're not committing to the situation, that we can't build hard and heavy like that. Like, there's a lot to gain here. There's not just... It's not just you going just, I'm going to spend money on you and you're just going to relish nothing from it. No information, no no ethics, no morals, no nothing, no just insight, nothing at all. Like, that's the thing. It's like, 
this thing that you want isn't tangent to what you actually need in life. Like a lot of people want things that, okay, you want money, but if you can't talk your way through something, you're going to have to use the money. And you're only going to be known for doing that with the money. But you're only going to be able to get around people who have money. Not even people who are the smartest. Not even people who can get you further. Because, I mean, money's only going to get you so far. Without you making enough money to replace that money, you're, you're not going to be able to compete with how much money's out there and how many people who have money are out there competing on a different level. They're playing a different life. You know what I mean? And, and, and even in my, in my real reality, I don't date above my means. If I can't make enough money to be able to support this person in any way and me, I don't do it. It doesn't mean go work harder to be able to bust my back to be able to show her that I could do it because guess what? In that time of me doing that, whatever happens, whether it's good or bad, the lesson's only going to be in it as I should have just been focused on doing what I need. Oh, I needed to do or wanted to do or should have been doing. Which, which was never lose sight of what I actually came, what I'm actually here for, which is to make an impact. You know how many times you get in these shortcomings? It's like, I got in one relationship, I wrote a book, and I couldn't finish the book. I wrote 100 pages, got the situation, got bad, I left, boom, here comes another 200. Now I'm at 300. Once they got to 500, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm ready for a book now. Like, I'm ready to write it, and just going through pages and scribbles and scratches and side notes and this color and that color and just, like, chaos. But the feeling, the feeling didn't do too hard at all. It wasn't lost. It was never lost. I didn't. I didn't lose what what I, what I wanted to achieve and to put myself in sacrifice and probably other other individuals along the way. But this was this is this is the thing. It was a trial and error. I wasn't lying to them. I was only going. I was only going to give them all of me to experience this as as me giving it all instead of me just giving a percentage and walking away and be like, ah, I ain't never been this. I ain't never felt that when I need to. So it wasn't that I was trying to use people because it wasn't. If it was a using situation, then it was mutually beneficial for sure. <laughs> because giving insight, giving you, giving energy, giving parts of you that you hold to yourself, to other people, and not in a, a small form. Well, obviously in small dosage, but to a point where you feel enough. You're like, wow, I can be around this person because I feel comfortable enough because they can. I can confide in them. And then that's where, you know, you, you, you get to that point where you're like, all right, what's next now? We're working on the partnership. I don't really think I'm ready for the relationship. You know, this is a lot. And it's like, damn, when do you, when do you have to, when do you stop, when do you stop compromising who you are for people who would never compromise who they think they would even want to be just to be with the person that you would be 100% of the time? Because that's what everyone wants. Everyone wants the 100 Everyone wants the raw, but to be that 100% of the time and you accept it 100% of the time, that's a tough battle. That's a tough battle, especially when you have battles personally with yourself, thinking about this, thinking about that. Are you good enough? You're not good enough. Do they just want me for this? Do they just want me for that? But it's like, yo, just, just stop looking at it like that it, within your means. You get your body done, you start doing all this, then you're not going to date dudes who just work at McDonald's, you're not going to date dudes who just are entrepreneurs and they work from job to job. You're not going to date those kind of guys. And some of you w would say you would, but you're being unrealistic because you wouldn't because it's a caliber thing. It's it's a caliber. Everything's about a caliber or status or it's, it's just how it works. It's some women want big houses that they can't afford. But they can mentally, they can mentally and physically do everything to keep the upkeep, upkeeping on it. And as well as keeping their man happy and as keeping their children happy as well. They're willing to give that much of their life as a, you know, a person that's ready for a partnership, which sometimes gets me stuck. Like, damn, we're in a Euro circuit. You know, we're in a Euro circuit. We're just so willing to give, 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 re re repair. I mean, not repair, um, forget and forgive without all the time really reasonable reasonable cause but that's just because of the way that the european circuit has us you know we're wired to just feel this kind of way 
when we're really not, we're really not. We're we're allowed to feel what we feel. If we feel something's fucked up, then it's fucked up, and that's what it is, you know. You feeling bad for it, feeling that kind of way is the way that the European circuits got us, you know, because that also really runs into the fact that the caliber, it's like, all right, people want to be with looks and the environment and their income, and it's like, if you're not in the same realm of that, it would just make you delusional to attempt something that you don't, you can't bring to the table because that's what they're going to want. They're going to want you to bring something to the table to be able to be an equivalent to that or even close to that, something they can work with. We're all going to sacrifice something, but what are we going to sacrifice that's really going to make or break us one day? Because that's what we're all, we're all in, in it for. Is something's going to make or break us, even though we try hard not to. I try. I give lots of chances for people. And you know why? Because I would want people to give me chances. It doesn't always work like that, but if my mind set stays at that positivity, which is bad, but at the same time good because I, I know when to control it, I know when to give more and take less because I, I pay attention enough. That's when I start to remember it's just like accessibility and it's like facades. It's like he knows himself. He doesn't have children. You know, he has a very intuitive mind. He does all these things with himself. And it's like if I speak about money, it's different now. Now everything becomes different. It goes to the partnership. It's like, what can we do? Like, oh, I'm, I love that. I would love to help. I would love it. And it's like, no, let's build on the first thing, the friendship. But like those three components, if those three components don't work in some kind of a tier where it's like tier one, tier two, tier three, or step one, step two, step three, it don't go step three, step one, and then step two. No, it's orderly. Like I said, friendship has to start first before we ever think that we're going to do have a, a duo of a team and you be the rapper and I'm the DJ or you're the DJ and I'm the rapper and we go conquer the world tour, touring and making all this money and doing all these great things. We don't have a friendship. We're not cool enough to be talking about doing all those things. The same analogies like with a car. It's like you're not going to just go buy a car that you never drove before and don't even know how to drive. You no, know, you, you might get a couple beaters or you might get a car that's cheap to help you save that, you know, you're able to drive. You're going to get a stick shift so you can learn how to, you know, do all these things. So by the time you want to get that fast car, you're, you're, you're kind of, you know, neutral to it. You, or you're used to it. But it's like, damn. It's just the accessibility and the facades and it's like too much competition. And it's like not enough looking out for like what genuinely would make you happen. Despite all the other shit that I was just telling you about, those the, those optics, the the looks, the environment, the income, and those around you, that type of shit, you're not matching up to those optics. That's why it's not working for you. And I, I, I used to be like that. I was like, yo, I want women that works hard all the time. And I'm like, you do. You just need to find a woman that works hard doing something that you do so that she understands the, the grind and struggle on it. A nurse who works 90 hours a week wouldn't understand what an uh, artist that works a hundred and something hours a week because it, when does it stop? If I go to sleep and wake up, there's going to be something for me to do. There's going to be something for some graphic for me to create for somebody because that's what happens when you get clients. That's what happens when you start business pages and you start, you know, Google ads and you do these type of things in a website in a website with a, with services and services with emails and contacts and forums and newsletters and things like this that one person controls a podcast doing this doing that helping others out yeah stop doing all that but guess what when 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 life starts to work out and get really interesting and things are starting to get you know tenfold payback i know what the hard work will be for it will be for all these times where i was sitting back like man is it enough am i doing enough is it working is it not working why isn't it working? Am I making it work or am I making it worse? Because that's what we do when we go through life. We put a lot of the battles on ourselves and we expect us to outcome it all the time without any fucking scars and any wounds. But it's like relationships. It's the same thing. We go, it's like a battle. But it's not like a battle for for reigning championship. No, it's a battle for the the long haul of a partnership. Because it's like the relationship, the first week, the year, is the, it's a real battle because it's, everything feels so surreal, but those numbers for you to be in five years, seven years, ten years, that means you got to go through time, which means that you got to deal with somebody every day. 
even if you're not physically dealing with them every day, to one some one point in in that relationship, y'all are gonna move together, and that means that you're gonna want to be living somewhere, and you're gonna have to be sharing things, and it's gonna be different. It's different living at someone's house and then living together with somebody. You know what I mean? Which makes it a whole different thing because now that y'all share stuff, it's different than her bringing stuff over and you sharing the space. It's a one-sided thing versus a come-together thing. That's the relationship and the partnership right there showing showing itself right there. And to me, that's 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 literally the, the biggest thing, you know. That and the trauma, like the unrejected, unhealthy trauma is what sometimes steers away those healthy relationships. Yeah, I said that right. That unhealed and rejecting trauma sometimes blocks you from healthy relationships. And it's just simply because they'll actually have your back and you know it. Sometimes you you, you stay away from people because you don't want them to have your back. You don't want them to have power over you. Guess what? They don't have power of you. Even if they tell you they do and you feel like it, you still have power of you. You still have power of what you say. You still have power of what you do. And it's like, damn, if you and, it, and if you don't and you can't stop fighting for that, it just ask yourself that. Do you, do you hate your own company? To the point where you got to keep fighting through the unhealed trauma and rejecting it just to have a healthy relationship, just to keep rejecting it, just to be like in a space where you don't even want to be by yourself within your own company. Listen, I'm going to keep it a thousand, right? The only real way to be happy is really to, to deal with all the voids face on. For real. And, and everything that you go through, every obstacle, every journey you go through within this whole process of just being in a relationship, wanting to be in a relationship, being single, being married, being divorced, whatever it is, just know you're carrying your heart and soul into every single one of these. So every time something doesn't work and something gets worse, you're leaving a little bit of you. That's how they break you. Because you keep going back and you keep letting them take you. At the same time, they keep picking up pieces to put them back. Well, guess what? That's super glue. It only lasts for so long. I'm not saying it won't last for, only, for so long. And I'm not saying for how long it will last, but it will only last for so long. You can't fix things that people can't heal from. Like, I used to try to fix people, knowing that I couldn't fix them because they never properly healed. Which made me what? Doing a disservice to them. Is because I would help them when they couldn't help themselves. So when I was away from them, what happened? They couldn't help themselves because I was enabling them to help them so they could never help themselves. And then it's the the good cop, bad cop, or the, the good and the bad in it, it. It became to the point where you're like, damn, a lot of the times you look at it like that, and you're like, you're helping people become more of them. I don't want the credit for that, but I want you to know that this is part of the building. I don't need you to build me up more, but I need what you feel and what you think is good and what you think can help me as well as you in this relationship grow to a partnership. I'm down with that. I'm down with listening. I'm very intuitive. I listen. I, I make sure what I'm saying pays is 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 equal to what you're saying and is knowledgeable to what you're saying. So when I'm responding, it's not just the I don't want you to I don't want you to hear me. I want you to understand me. So when you respond, you have something to say pertaining the thing that I said instead of just a yes or I, I understand. I need you to speak on why you understand it. That's why the difference between when someone tells you something, people who respond instantly without understanding just want to give their opinion or just want to give the rebuttal on something without saying, you know what, I understand what you're saying because this, this, and that makes sense. Just like any math equation, it's one plus one is two. But when you add things like relationship, problems, unhealed problems, self, doubt, mental illness, anything that you could throw in there, the equation is going to be three. There's always going to be one extra. There's always going to be one extra because if I'm fine and she's not, I'm going to have to deal with her not being fine. And that puts a lot on me. So then it becomes three. It becomes that one problem that we have to deal with. 
on top of the two of us and our individual problems. Because I can't always go into problems bringing my problems in. I mean, every situation bringing my problems in. Because women like to fix and heal. Because they're nurturers or nourishers. I keep getting those two mixed up. But the motherly instinct of them is so... It's a beautiful thing. But at the same, I'm, old, I'm grown. I don't want to be babied. I don't want to be taken care of like my mother. But at the same time, I want to understand why. I want to understand why certain things happen. I want to understand why. So I explore. I understand. I indulge. I go and do things that I want to do. No regards to, to, to looking back on why I did them. And I'm not even saying that I did bad things. I'm just saying the experience. A lot of the people want to change experiences in the past, but it's like those experiences helped you. Those experiences made you. Those experiences guided you. And for people like me, those experiences helped me. Because I'm able to sit and be with, you know, around other individuals and understand that. Especially women, when we sit down and have conversations, they're like, wow, you know, what's, why can I find this? And, and it's like, no, it's because people want to step first without thinking where they're going to step, why they're going to step, how hard they're going to step. These little variables that make it that serious. You know what I mean? That make it that serious. And it's like, you know, you can do what you want to do. You can be happy. You don't have to let things stop you. Only you can heal and close any void. You know, this step is to stop stuffing and hiding and avoiding all of that. Just stop stuffing, hiding, and avoiding and compartmentalizing and compressing energy and emotion for things you can't get past. Stop doing that. Just heal from it. Understand why you need to heal. How do you heal? You have to put yourself through life. You have to put yourself through life. You have to look at people and be like, okay, maybe maybe I should look into this. Maybe I should give that person a cha chance. Maybe we should... See where connection could be. Maybe we should see where a friendship could be. And I know it's hard because not everyone wants to start a friendship. But you have to give yourself that. You have to give yourself that opportunity to fail. Before you honestly sit around and say that I'm feeling so much. Because if you would have failed and knew what it's like to feel, you wouldn't have to worry about feeling all the time. And if you did feel a lot and it was a lot of failures, you would have to sit back at the drawing board until you figure it out. Like literally. I could be in a relationship anytime I would like to, but I'm focused on really looking at it like this. When I get in a relationship, do I have a schedule? Do I have things that I need to do? What do I have organized in my life? It, can she help me? And to be honest, any woman that ever deals with a creative knows that, knows that they secretly become an assistant. And it's not because it's, it's a thing that, you know, is a demand or a thing that's asked. It's just that's what women want to do. They want to help. They want a man that does does you know, a lot for himself so that when they meet him, they, this is not a boring life. The people who just do these one things and go to work and come home and just watch TV and it's really basic. The life is not bad. It's decent, but it's not experience. It's not a lot of experiences. It's the times that are very small. There aren't stories and trips and, you know, things that can, can really hold heavy weight. I'm not saying that all things are that happen are, are minuscule, but the things that hold weight are the things we remember, the things we can tell, the things we can live on. Those kind of memories, those kind of sagas, that kind of legacy is what we live for. We live for love too, but we also live for war, which means that a lot of us are built for both. That duality runs very, very deep in some of our bloods, but guess what? Some people need to know when we need to stop fighting war because that war is not against everyone else. That war is within ourselves. Because if we already know we're built for we're, we're built for love, we gotta know that we we're built for war. But we gotta know that we're not only built for war. We can't always be out there trying to be the caregiver, but we can't always forget that sometimes we gotta be the soldier. And we can't forget that we can't always be the soldier. We just have to remember within that duality that that trifecta of do's, don'ts, and maybe nots and maybes can happen. But you still have to remain who you are. Do it all. Do it all. And this isn't even the craziest. I had so many more notes about this, but I really want to to keep it short, and I just really want to just say one more thing. At the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, 
look at it like this, right? If you want to be loved, stop lying to yourself. Be real with the people that you encounter. If people want to say that they want to love you, they want to understand you, they want to learn you, stop doing yourself a disservice. Give that person a chance. Give yourself a chance, even bigger. Give your, When you don't want to give people a chance and you put all these things in front of you to say that this is why you don't want to, give them a chance or they don't deserve a chance, you're telling yourself that you don't deserve that chance either. Remember that when you tell people that they don't deserve that chance, you're telling yourself that you don't deserve that chance either. So really think about that. Think of, think think about what you're saying. Like really think about that. And don't think about that just because I'm saying that now and I've said it a couple of times. Think about it after too. Because you got to make right with the people who did you right too. And the people who did you wrong, no one says you have to go out there and get revenge on them, but you can't forget that. You got to live with that. That experience is what's going to build you. That builds a resume. That hardens you. That conditions you. But at the same time, that doesn't make you. The experiences make up of who you are, but it doesn't make you. No one's going to... That's the thing with the Pamela Andersons and the, 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 the Selena Powells and the Elijahs and... The, Alexis, Texas, they're cool with just being known for these one things that they can forever live on. But then there's some people like Kid and Play and these people, Ezel, you know, from, from Friday. And like certain people who wanted to be looked for as bigger people, but they just couldn't get it because these people were just only looking at the things they did. Look at Kim Kardashian, you know, we only knew her for the Ray J thing. And then look at all the other things that she did. And then look how many other people want to emulate that. It's just like. Microwave, the microwave era really has us looking at things like, damn, are we good enough? Like, it makes us look at things and be like, are we good enough? Right? Are we good enough? Can we do the things that we set out to be? And if we can't do the things we set out to be, what's holding us back? Then you have to ask yourself again, who's holding us back? And whoever's holding us back, are they holding us back enough that we really can't achieve it? Because they're telling us we can't or because we are telling her we can't ourselves we can't you want to be happy put more into yourself you want to be happy stop telling yourself no and giving yourself the disadvantage by putting no as the title i'm too good for this person how do you know that person is not good enough how do you know that when you label and you do that to yourself I mean, you do that to them, you're doing it to yourself because if you don't even think to give yourself the chance, that's 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 such a great, I'd never even thought about that. Really, like, think about that. You, you don't give people a chance, but you're not even giving yourself a chance. It's the crazy thing. You want people to give you a chance, but you wouldn't give people a chance. It doesn't work like that. And a lot of the times when you don't want to do it thinking that it wouldn't do, I'm not even saying sexual things. I'm just saying giving people a chance. I'm just saying embarking on the, 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 the journey of always saying no because you don't think people could be good enough and people are always talking game. And it's like, let's be honest. We know what it's like to be in the room with somebody who's a liar because we've heard it before. But guess what? Not everyone lies. Not everyone is a liar. You know why? Because you don't know that. You haven't been with everyone. You haven't been around all the people who lied in the world and the people who didn't lie. You haven't even met all the people who are going to love you yet in life. You haven't even pe met the people who are going to see the best version of you. So when you're worried about a breakup and not getting past it, bigger shit to do. Bigger person to become. Better person to become. It's really simple. Even though I said it simple, it took 45 minutes for me to say it that simple way. Even though it wasn't simple, but it sounded like it was simple. Because it, it's it's more about you putting yourself in the predicament where you know who you are when you go into these situations. You know what you want. You know how you want to build it. Not saying you want power, but saying that you know what you want. This isn't a just, we going to wing it. No, I kind of got a plan. Let's make this a blueprint. So we can map it out and build on it. You know what I mean? And there would be plenty more episodes about relationships and a whole bunch of other things. But 
this is this is this is this is gonna be part one of it. And I'm gonna name this part one. I'm naming this episode seven, the ships part one. And this video was sponsored by Sinclair Pierre. Why would you not dot com? CNC podcast. Derek Olson. Why not Derek? On all social media, all platforms, all that good shit. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for tuning in. I'm back. We're healthy. Love is love. Energy is currency. If they wouldn't do it for you, then you wouldn't do it for them. You will at least do it for the sake that you're able to do it for you. And do it for the sake that you're able to do it for them. There's a possibility. If you don't do it for them, you wouldn't do it for you. Do it for the ability that you could do it. Not because you can't. Because it's easy to say you can't. Do it because you could do it. And you can say yes. You wouldn't date that guy because he's not on your level. Maybe you're not on his level. Maybe he just is on a way higher level than you. And you think that you're just going to do whatever it takes to get on his level. It doesn't work like that. Those kind of facades and that accessibility, yes, it is very hard to grasp. But no, what I'm saying is that the attempts, the tries have to be there. The opening up, the understanding that all relationships can't break or make you. Some of them actually mold and they hold you. They hold you to a a self-higher standard that you make yourself because due to what they do to you. You know how we all become better? Because we make mistakes and we get disappointed. So you know how we become better? We accomplish. Every time we go through a breakup, you notice we start we start making goals for ourselves. And you know we start setting these goals and we start achieving these goals. You know why? Because look who's putting themselves first and making themselves possible and telling themselves they're able to do it. Same applicable way you put it in, into a really relationship or a friendship. You can make it happen just like they want to make it happen or they could make it happen. Some people get unrealistic with the expectations and outlooks and boom. Then as you think that in three years and we, we'll be together having fruit snacks on the couch. We'll go, let's get past three days. Let's keep it realistic. Even though we can dream unrealistic, but let's keep it realistic at the same time when we actually are in the moments. When it's nighttime and we're both tired, it's cool to keep it unrealistic. But at the same time, we got to live in these moments, these things we created. Just stop giving yourself the short end of the stick and then playing the victim. Stop saying there's no good people out there without trying, without opening it up. Opening it up doesn't mean giving it up. Just opening up the idea of speaking to other people. The idea of letting another human become a part of your life. The sheer energy to consume, to build you up, to even understand and help you. Listen, give you attention. Try to find a balance for him so he can find a balance for you while learning you, while learning how to be around for others. Maybe you have kids, maybe you have pets, maybe you have family members that you take care of. Whatever it is, just stop not giving people chances because you're shortcoming yourself by not giving yourself a chance. Stop doing it. It's not healthy. And you might not like it every single time you come across somebody that you might think you might like or you just wouldn't and it's not your type. What's free dinner? You can tell the dude no. Sometimes you have to make the objective to make a forward step. If guys are hitting on you all the time and it's all you can say but you're still single complaining and being a victim role and doing all this, guess what, mom? I think it's time for you to work on that. It's time for you to honestly stop sitting around you know doing that to yourself i think it's time for you to start putting back into yourself and showing people that the reason why you want to be better is because you will be better you understand that this is Derek Austin. episode seven the ships thank you <laughs>